Welcome back to Spectrum of the Arts. In the late 1960s, Sly and the Family Stone had a big hit called Everyday People. Included in the lyrics was a line stating, different strokes for different folks. It's a statement that holds true today, not only in life, but in the world of art. As we continue today's show, we'll take you back to Osceola Fundamental High School and trainer Ted Lacasio, who shares some thoughts about the latest available technology as well as classroom management strategies. Uh, this course is all about secondary digital art strategies. So in essence, what we're doing is uh, sharing um, some techniques that secondary teachers, meaning middle school and high school art teachers, visual art teachers, uh, can use to hopefully, you know, get some, some good success out of their students. So sharing lesson plans, sharing um, classroom management techniques in the digital art realm, stuff that's specific to teaching on the computers, art on the, on the computers. The difference between teaching digital art and traditional art is that it is a very different tool and the tool has a lot of different um, capabilities. If you teach someone how to do regular watercolor painting and then they understand that with the traditional materials, I think they're painting on the computer or using a digital program comes out much better since they have the knowledge of first doing it with traditional materials. If a teacher is new to teaching digital art, they're, you know, there can be some, some difficulty um, trying to adapt because sometimes they don't know the software as well. They haven't used it as much. So these, these courses give uh, them an opportunity to practice a bit with the software. Um, and also just the approach to, to overall to using the software and how it can be used um, in, in the visual arts. It's really a process and a lot of procedures. You just have to, it's a habit. You have to use it to get to know it. So this was the summer of getting to know your iPad. And uh, so every day this summer I have been taking photographs of things, going back and using it as note references to make my own digital paintings. So yes, I've been, that's, I've been using, you know, these resources all summer. So you have to, you, we have to keep up with what's going on, but it's, it's fun. Some of the teachers have taken digital art at the college level, some have never taken digital art um, and, and need, need a little course to kind of get them up and running. Um, so it's a great way for us to show them where they can get lesson plans, show them where they can get some tutorials on uh, certain aspects of the software. Um, so, you know, we're giving them a knowledge base, we're giving them something that's going to help make their job a little bit easier, we hope. I took a class at the Art Center uh, just so I could, you know, start to learn it and understand it better and get more comfortable with it. And then I grew to really like it and enjoy using it. It helped me to see that sometimes I tend to overcomplicate things and I think he, what he was teaching us to do was to keep things kind of simple. It's like sometimes we feel like we need to reinvent the wheel all the time, but um, what I was learning from him is that once you teach the students the tools, how to use the programs, then you start using it as a tool and you get the ideas or the concepts and the students work with the concepts. It's always interesting and um, a good thing when we get to collaborate with other teachers because we always get ideas about how to do things better and I think that's one of the beauties of coming to a a training so um, training with art teachers is always fun. It's great that um, our county, our state, you know, is, is, is teaching this stuff in middle school and in high school. I think for, for those kids that, um, that enjoy art, that are considering art as a career, it's, it's awesome that they have the opportunity to work with professional tools and, and that we're, you know, getting these teachers prepared. To, to share that stuff with these kids. I think they can really go far with it. My grasp of, of the medium has, has gone out the roof and to share that with my students is just thrilling. I've, in the past year, I had a lot of students get in shows with their digital work and it, it was just thrilling for the students, their families, um, and everyone. It, not only does it teach the students something new, but it, it also teaches our school, our faculty members, something too about how 
you know, technology is really important for all areas um, and departments. I think the potential for a digital artist to find employment and get their work out there and earn money is probably even stronger than one who's solely working with traditional materials. And, and the reason why is because there's so many different areas where digital art can be used. Um, you know, you can be a professional illustrator for things like books, magazines, etc. cetera. Um, you can be an animator. You could be a graphic designer. You could, you can be a fine artist. Um, there's, there's new um, and contemporary ways to apply digital art skills all, all the time. You know, it's, it's a growing field, uh, even more so than photography. You can incorporate photography into digital art. So, you know, you know, painting and drawing will always exist, but you can include painting and drawing within the digital realm and take it even somewhere further. We have a traveling iPad lab that comes to, goes to all the different schools, and this, I had it last year, and I'll be getting it again this year. Um, more and more we're using the, the uh, teaching the kids a lot about digital art and I just wanted to as a teacher become more informed myself and be able to use some of these apps in a better way so that my kids can um, learn learn more about them as well. Oh, I find these training sessions very valuable especially um, working with students of very diverse backgrounds and ability levels and Mr. Ogle makes it extremely uh, not only beneficial but very easy to understand and you know helps make sure that every teacher in here doesn't walk out without fully understanding each of the apps and how to use the iPad to better better up my instruction in the classroom. In recent years, we've just become sort of a digital age, you know, and uh, so I've adapted that into my classroom. I have to say I was kind of reluctant five, ten years ago. I thought, oh, it's one more thing to do, but now I just can't live without it for my students. Um, kindergarten through the fifth grade, every student puts their hands on an iPad and they are in the process of creating like actual pieces of art. It's not just games at all. It's definitely a learning process. And every, everything that the kids create is a real work of art. I can teach concepts and elements and principles of design using the iPads as just another tool, like I would a canvas or a paper and paint. And um, the thing about it is that the kids are completely engaged in it, you know? It's, this is their age, this is who they are, this is, this is the world we live in. So it's essential that they know how to use it and, um, and they love it. We purchase labs, either iPad labs or computer labs at our schools for the dedicated art rooms. And we also provide uh, the teachers with something called Art Tip, Art Technology Integration Program, where they receive a laptop and specific training on how they can use technology to instruct with. We also provide funding for buses and admission for field trips to our local arts institutions, which is really incredible. And again, we wrap all that around with training to help on how to implement these materials and equipment. Uh, who's next? Teresa. This one is uh, called Cam Tune Free. Just something that I that I saw. It was kind of cute to uh, teach value. Um, they uh, use a photo from the library. And there you go. And then it has effects. And then and then you can undo. You can share it. I already emailed this to to Mary. <laughs> and an email, and then it'll attach it. That was just kind of cool. Last year, I didn't feel like I was um, informed enough, and um, a lot of these apps are already installed on the right, so on the iPads. But um, now I have I I see that there's a bigger variety, um, and we learned how to use Reflector, which is um, an app the, the app that we've been looking at here today, where you um, we can reflect what's happening on our iPad so onto the here's on my iPad. onto the and smart so board I, so that all I the students can folders, see it and then you can walk around freely around the room um, without having so, to like for example, uh, art office actually sit down and have, um, have the iPad hooked onto here. something. Okay, this one's called Hello Oil Painter and um, 
it's kind of fun. There's a series of these. There's Hello Hello Crayon, Hello Colored Pencil. But that those ones are good for the little ones. But I, I kind of liked Hello Oil Painter for my like fourth and fifth graders. And when you go on here, you, you see that you know you've got all your different tools that you could use, and you can click on the colors. You can actually you can start to draw with it. Like you can choose a color and draw with it. Um, go back to your palette again. You can mix colors on the palette if you want to, um, or you can just wait. Let me see. There's you can color mixing. <laughs> Perhaps somebody found something that's really good that right, you so may have never easy. found. There are so yeah, many of them, and, and uh, doing this. the sharing is, we do, we do a lot of networking no, and collaborating as teachers, and um, we learn from each other. So. And I've always been a proponent of teachers teaching teachers. I've been a member of a state and so national art or organizations of for many, many years, and I learn the most from other teachers. So these people have done those things in their classroom and they're right, sharing so it and it's something they've already tried out so I know, can trust that this is something I can use in my classroom. Yeah. So what happens though is once you open it up, it may take a few seconds to a few minutes for the information to download to that one drive on your iPad. And then the reflector stuff is right here. This is a screenshot of what I showed you earlier today so that you can remember if you're like, wait a minute, how did he do that? You can just click on this and see that. Well, that's it for today. We hope that you enjoyed our show and you'll join us again next time for another look at the spectrum of the arts. I'm Jonathan Ogle, see you next time.